Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Flink Forward, brought to you by Data Artisans. Hi, this is George Gilbert. We're back at uh, Flink Forward, uh, the Flink conference sponsored by Data Artisans, the co company that commercializes uh, Apache Flink and provides additional application management uh, platforms that make it easy to take stream processing at scale for commercial uh, organizations. We have Stephen Wu from Netflix, always a company that is pushing the, pushing the edge of what's possible, and one of the early Flink users. Stephen, welcome. Thank you. And tell us a little about the use case that, uh, that was first you know, applied uh, to Flink. Sure. Uh, we, our first use case is a, a routing job for Keystone Data Pipeline. Our Keystone Data Pipeline process over three trillion events per day. So we have a thousand routing jobs that we uh, they do some simple filter projection, but the thousand routing job is a challenge for us, and we recently migrated our routing job to Apache Flink. And so is the function of a routing job, is it, is it like an ETL pipeline? Uh, not like a ETL pipeline, but it's more like a, it's a data pipeline. It delivers data from the producers to the data sinks, where people can consume those data, like Elasticsearch, Kafka, or Hive. Oh, so almost like the, the source and sink with a hub in the middle? Yes, that is exactly right. Okay. That's one of our biggest use cases. And the other thing is our data engineer, they also need some stream processing to the, to the data analytics. So they can, their job can be stateless or can be stateful. If a stateful job can be as big as terabyte of their state for a single job. So tell me, with these uh, stateful jobs, what are some of the things that you use state for? So for example, like a sessionized user, user activity, like if you have clicked the video on the on our UI, all those user activity, they need to be sessionized, window, put a window, sessionized, yeah, those yes. are the state, typical. Okay. and. Um, what sort of calculations might you be doing, and, and what, um, which of the Spink, uh, Flink APIs are you using? So right now we're using the uh, data stream API, so a little bit low level. Okay. We haven't used the uh, Flink SQL yet, but it's in our roadmap, yeah. Okay, so, and what is the data stream, you know, down closer to the metal, what does that give you control over right now that, that is attractive? And what what will um, will you have as much control uh, with the SQL API? Okay. Yes. So the low level data stream API can give you the full flexibility, full feature set of everything. High level SQL is much easier to use, but obviously you have your the feature set is more limited. Okay. Yeah. So that's a trade off there. So so tell me about um, for the like a stateful application. Is there sort of scaffolding about managing this distributed uh, cluster um, that, uh, that you had to build that you see coming down the pike from, from Flink and Data Artisans that might make it easier either for you or for mainstream customers? Sure, I think in terms of state management, I think that's where Apache Flink really shines compared to other stream processing engines. So they do a lot of uh, work underneath already. I, I think the main thing we need from Flink for the future, near future, is regarding the job recovery performance. But in terms of the like, state management, API is really mature. Flink is more, more, I think it's probably more mature than most of the other stream processing engines. Meaning like Kafka, Spark? Yes. Um, so in, in the state management, um, can, you, uh, can, can a user, business user or business analyst issue a SQL query across the cluster and Flink figures out how to um, manage the, um, you know, essentially distribution of the query and then uh, the filtering and, and presentation of the results across the, transparently across the cluster? Um, I'm not an expert on Flink SQL, but I think, yes, essentially if Flink SQL will convert to a Flink job, which will we'll be using the data stream API, so they will manage the state, yes. But, uh, so yeah. when you're using the lower level data stream API, you have to manage the distributed state and, and, like, and uh, sort of retrieving and filtering. 
but that's something at a higher level abstraction. Hopefully, that'll be. No, I think in either case, I think the state management is handled by Flink. Okay. Yeah. Distributed all the all the state management. Even, you can just yeah. Ev even if it's querying at a, at the data stream level. Yeah, but if it querying at the SQL level, you won't be able to deal with those state API directly. You can say I'll do a windowing. Okay. Let's say you have SQL, I'm doing window with some se sessionization by idle time. That would be translated to be a useful job, and Flink will manage those window, manage those session state. So you do not need to wonder about it. But either way, you do not need to wonder about state management. Apache oh. Flink take care of it. So, so tell me um, some of the other products you might have looked at. Is the issue that if they have a clean separation from the storage layer um, for large scale state management, you know, as opposed to in memory, um, is it that? that the large scale is almost treated like a second tier, and therefore um, you almost have a separate set or a, or, a, or a restricted set of operations at distributed state level versus at the compute level? Is, would that be a limitation of other stream, streaming processors? No, I don't see that. Uh, I think different uh, stream processors you take a different approach. If I, like a Google Cloud Cloudflow, Google Cloudflow, they are thinking about using big table, for example. But those are external state management. Flink decided to take the approach of embedded state management inside the Flink. And when it's external, what, what's the trade-off? Uh, that's a good question. I think if it's external, obviously your latency might be, that might be higher. But your, your throughput might be a little bit lower because you're going over the network. But the benefit of that external state management is now your job becomes stateless. Your job does not have, you know, make the recovery much faster for job failure. So it's a trade-off over there. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay. Got it. All right. Um, Steven, we're going to have to end it on that. But that was uh, most enlightening, and thanks for joining. Sure. Thank you. And this is George Gilbert for uh, Wikibon and the Cube. We're again at Flink Forward in San Francisco um, with data artisans. We'll be back after a short break.